Okay. All right. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Uh, Mike, talk. Dave, don't be one of those guys who's like days away from a from quitting a job for like six years <laughs> and then please don't a uh, giant like dump truck just like <laughs> beep 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 and you're not listening to it because you're like too busy listening to an audiobook version of a comic book hmm yeah that's Kelly talk that's yeah. or he gets it's his last day before retirement and he gets too stoned and then Han, uh, hans ruger attacks or something i can't remember how that movie kelly goes. please that's just <laughs> <laughs> can you keep your references to like anime and like persona type video yeah, games? david Don't talk ruin this for me uh i've told everybody at work so i can't back down now oh no are you actually <laughs> what's what's next on your on your life agenda Oh, I, I want to podcast full time. That's my. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a little something called Chatterbait. Uh, yeah, actually, yes, that's yeah. kind of like podcasting. Yeah. Okay, uh, everyone sounds good. I'm gonna I'm gonna lower everyone down just a little tiny yeah. bit, just so if I can like I can try to minimize the, well, the bleed we're through. Get, we're gonna get heated. I can tell you that. Yeah, there's gonna be, there's, I can tell you right now, there's gonna be some heated gamer moments on this podcast. This is true. I love yeah. heated gamer Like I can't moments. wait mm-hmm. until we're like at least three beers each deep, and we just start yelling at each other. Like oh, that's my, like, I need my beers by myself. Yeah, no, Dave, sorry. get in there, get so in there, get in there. Everybody, right, yeah. everybody, beer up, bathroom mm-hmm. up, and uh, we should be good to go. Yeah, you guys got your lists. You guys know where your lists are. Where's I got my, my list. list. I got it. I got it. I got the list up here, but it's also on my phone. So, okay. Yep. Can't lose. Yep. Full eyes, bad bladder. Can't bad can't yeah. game. All right. <clears throat> All right. Okay. The floor is yours. I mean, games don't exist, just like the male clitoris. Oh, mm. we can't do that. We we got kicked off the RSS feed last time I did that. And say something non-controversial. Um. <laughs> well, if you um, just make up a new word for it, like the midoris or something like that, you'll be fine. I, like I believe yeah. that if you sit a Republican and a Democrat down, they can find some common ground. Bam. That'll get you yeah, kicked off. Kicked. Big uh, if true. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Okay. Uh, Hashtag brave. We all sound good enough. Try not to yell too loud. We try not to talk too quietly either. It's a very yeah. fine. It's a very fine line. Hey guys, you want to get into that game of the year podcast? Okay. Let me let me start this nightmare <laughs> properly. <All right. laughs> I'm already a little bit worried because the the recorder already almost ate shit there for a second, but then it didn't. So we'll see how this goes. You turn off all your porn torrents or no, God, oh. no. Well, you could. Twenty yeah, if, you seed, if you don't see it, yeah. you ain't getting seed. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a monster, David. They're, they're a very strict torrenting community. Oh, yeah. Matt, I seed. Yeah. I seed yeah. every time. It's a, uh, it's already 20 after seven and right. it's a work night. That's we're true. gonna be at this for a while. Yeah, all right. For some of you, okay, it's a work we're talking night. about gaming. Okay, yeah. so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Super Hopped Up Game of the Year Edition. 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 The episode Edition. you've all, or at least a couple of you, might have been waiting for. Also, like, like funnily enough, it's episode 100, and I guess kind of episode Hell. 101 because yeah. we're gonna double oh, do up we on number, this. Do we number the, the yes. Game of the Year? Yeah, Mike. there are numbers of. Well, I thought that episodes. they were like specials, like. They, no, don't, they no. don't fit into the normal an, canon. An episode is an episode is an this episode. Is I, uh, yeah, every episode is a special. So, mm-hmm. fun fact, there I was no going to do movies. something special, and then I didn't. I'm really proud of you, Kelly. Wow. Well, game of the year is special every year. That's so, true. I am your host, Chris Norris Jones. You're your Star Wars captain. You're the, the man running the ship. Sitting on the chair is Mr. David Beebe. Uh, that's me. On another chair is Mr. Kelly Wright. Can't prove anything. On one half of the couch is one Mr. Matthew Emery. Hey, I'm here. And occupying that other half of the couch is one Mr. Michael Parker. Here too. We have basically a full house. I would say this is this is the team. This is the squad. This is our hashtag squad life. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm very glad you all could come here today because we have some very important business, and that is 2017, a year in games. Mm. Let's talk about the games. Let's not talk about anything else that happened in 2017. I agree because it was a good year for games. So Full this stop. so this year I only focused on games so I don't know what else happened why what was going on this year nothing don't worry about no it, it was good yeah. okay yeah. You sure nothing going on tonight especially those, nothing, okay. this is the only thing that's happening tonight those fire and green clouds out the window aren't actually there that's all a video game projection I thought it was a movie set yeah it's that's VR it. man it's VR yeah. PSVR right now oh, oh, I, yeah. I walked directly through a movie set yesterday did they stop you uh, no but the PA like should have because it was like there's a a grocery store sorry I know this is not games. <laughs> but like i just came out of the gym and i wanted to buy some strawberries and i noticed a whole bunch of like movie shit around there and i was just like okay yeah whatever and like walked directly into the scene really like, literally walked directly into the scene opened the door and was like oh wait what's going on here and then the pa is like no 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 well it's like you're too that late might, dude you're that might have yeah, yeah, that, that been a main a, character now that might have been a tv a cable tv set because Probably. i think real movie sets actually have security like that, I, I think uh, movie... Debatable. Yeah, you'd be surprised. So one, you got that PA fired. 
Uh, two, did yeah. the director stop the scene and say, what a beautiful specimen. I need you for my next <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's I'm, perfect. I'm in the movie now. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Featured extra, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> Featured gamer. <laughs> All right, so if this is if this is your first year listening to us do one of these dumb game of the year podcasts, there is something of a format. There is going to be the five of us all extolling the virtues of our personal favorite games. All of us have put together our own lists. It's be it a top five or a top ten or a top some number, uh, and we're going to go through them. Uh, we're going to try to keep that relatively brisk because there's a lot of us here, and most of us have played games this year, Matt excluded. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll we'll try to figure that out. Uh, and then after that, we're going to pull out our weapons. I, I asked you all to bring your, your sharpest objects. We're going to get them ready. My and, then we're, and then we're going to murder each other uh, argumentatively to decide what our general podcast game of the year is. We'll be going through the full list of all the games we played, cutting them down one by one until we get like a top five, top ten list. Ordered list from, from that. And then we figure out what our best game of the year is. Our, our conferred and agreed upon game of the year. Guys, does that all sound cool? Do we are we all in accordance? To I wasn't the, paying attention at all to the Roberts rules of podcasting. Um, ad hominem attacks are allowed. Yeah, absolutely. That's all we have. Okay. That's like I pretty much ex speak exclusively through straw man arguments. So like we're just gonna <laughs> I'm throw a, I'm those out. Really nilly. Fallacy. <laughs> 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 Listen, loot boxes are the best thing. We can all agree on that. But Never, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your game didn't have loot boxes in it. Not um, a good game. Um, argument ad absurdum. Stricken from the record. <laughs> Reductio. Policy okay. fallacy. So, um, we all no know Star Wars is pretty gay, so <laughs> <laughs> let's just start. On the <laughs> yeah. All right, okay, off to a good start. All right, so for no other reason than I like going counterclockwise, and I don't want to go first. Mike, I've decided oh, you're going to start this off. I, was, I, thought I, was, I thought we like going clockwise. No, we never go clockwise. Counterclockwise. Damn it. Okay. Counterculture up in here. All right, boys, uh, here we go. So I did not play a lot of games that came out this year. Uh, I bear I had to think pretty hard to get a top five, and I think I partially cheated on one of mine. So we'll start this off at number five. And number five is a game I literally finished about like 20 minutes before I disembarked from my house to get here tonight. Cool. And that was Wolfenstein, the New Colossus. Woo, oh, nice. There's... You finished it. Yay, I'm I glad. Did, I did finish it. Um, Now... Uh, we're experimenting with this new format here. Who uh, are we going to talk so, about this now? Is it is it on anybody? Here's else? the way I think we should do this format: is is if anyone else has played it, we talk about a game once. Okay, I yeah. don't want everyone talking about a game more than once. Um, so yes, Mike, I have also played Wolfenstein. 2. Is it higher than number five? Uh, I, I it's higher you, than number five. Okay, okay then no, just, no, it's lower than number five. Just talk about Wolfenstein. Let's just talk about Wolfenstein. Now, here we go. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about Wolf this. Is gonna be the Wolfenstein talk then? Yeah, give okay. me some time to figure out. What I'm gonna do for my list? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why I wanted you to go counterclockwise. No, you did. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Wolfenstein. Okay. Here's the Wolfenstein. Is that by virtue of me not playing that many games, it made my top five. I really wanted to like this game. I will tell you that I I went in thinking I was gonna really like it, and it and is, I, it is a game that makes a good introduction and does a lot of stylish things that makes you want to like it. Yeah, and like there there are a lot of moments of that game that I really did like. Uh, the big problem, and it's a fundamental flaw that lasts from start to finish, is that the game, the, the game gives you a lot of tools, and then like gives you a task to a, that cannot be accomplished with those tools. Oh, like what? Ha okay, so what do you mean exactly? Okay, so a lot of that game, in fact, I would say the entire game, your character is like obnoxiously frail, like you die quite easily. You, you it is it is a, it is a shockingly hard game. You have will you die considered a lot. getting good? <laughs> I have considered getting good. Uh, I have considered following all the tool tips. Uh, but here's the thing, Matt, and I'll tell you that that this game really sets it up. It sets itself up to be. And here's what I, what I say: it gives you the tools. Like it gives you the ability to dual wield shotguns. It gives you the ability to sprint so hard into a man that he dies. It, <laughs> that's cool. That's that's the like, only upgrade sorry. worth getting. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't play this game. It's now my number one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I'm saying, like you can dual wield shotguns. You can sprint into a man that he dies. You can like eviscerate dudes with your axe, like very very brutally. And like that's all really cool. And I really want to do a lot of that. But it's very hard to because your guy dies so quickly when you're out in the open. Hmm. And it's just. It, it seems to me like an, a, a strange decision that they took to make your character so frail, considering how they set it up to essentially be, and considering the, the nature of the games of the past, 
a sort of run and gun kind of kind of deal. Well, it, it's it's a game that at first blush it seems like you should be playing it in a, in a somewhat Call of Duty esque style. Like they let you go down iron sights for all of the guns, but that if you're doing that, you're playing the game poorly. Like the only way. Mm. Like even on the easier difficulties, the only really viable strategy for Wolfenstein 2 is to either be using like akimbo machine guns or akimbo shotguns or maybe the rocket launcher and then running at enemies as fast as possible and just like shooting well, while screaming the well, entire I, fucking time. I found time. too that like a lot of the scenes I had to stealth mode it, which like if you've been listening to to this thing, you know that the one thing that I'm I'm basically done with forever is is trying to like bring stealth into a non-stealth game. Like there are a lot of mechan- there are a lot of things that stealth games need to- in order to be good. And as much as I shit on Metal Gear, Metal Gear has all of those things. Yeah. Uh, this this franchise does not. It does not really have a method of mitigating alarms once you get alarmed. It doesn't really have a method of like understanding the way the enemy's vision works. And it doesn't. It is very. Uh, what's it, it's very um. First person stealth is hard, and they doesn't do. Yeah. And Wolfenstein Two does not do it particularly yeah. well. Yeah, I'll, I'll just yeah. It, it, there's no there's no way of like doesn't have give you that emergency response. Like you can't you can't undo when you get. Anyways, yeah. If it doesn't have Deus Ex or Dishonored levels of stealth, it isn't yeah. doing it right. Anyways, it, but, but the problem is like you have so many of these these sequences where you need to kill two commanders in order to alleviate the alarms from going, and see so basically it's hard to run and gun because. Because you, they keep summoning new guys. It's hard to stealth because the stealth mechanics are so wonky. I don't know. It just it seems like it it gives you it gives you the wrong set of tools for the job that it wants you to accomplish, and that holds it back from being a truly good game. I bet I'm better than you at this I, game. I, I, <laughs> am, I also bet. I bet. <laughs> I'm very surprised that we've talked about this this game for so long, and we haven't once mentioned like. Oh the no! Like, don't worry. Like, I'm, shit crazy story. I'm, I'm, that I'm I saw like, I'm, maybe I'm, a fraction of, and was like, oh my god. I mean, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Mike to. Yeah, okay. To so get yeah, now, that, this, now yeah. that I'm done with the bad, because he's not wrong. Yeah. Now, now that I'm done with the bad, the things that held it back. Let's talk about the good. And the good is, it's it's super fun, like to get into that game world because yeah. So it's it's set in the alternate history where the Nazis won World War II, and you know when they took over America, uh, who well who. Who else welcomed them with open arms but the KKK? Like, not even just the KKK. It seemed like most of the America that you see in that game just was more than willing to roll over and fully accept the boot heel. It's, it's, a, it's a really interesting political statement that they're making with this game. And do you know what's... Like, the cutscenes themselves are, like... Cutscenes are the best part like, of the game. There are some moments of these cutscenes where, like, I was not expected to, like, think during a cutscene, but, like... Like there's like there's a couple in that game that are like like borderline thought provoking and it is it is it's like interestingly well done and I I want to ask to the three of you who have not played this game how averse are you to some spoilers right now <laughs> I, I I don't want to hear spoilers yeah I would prefer yeah. not spo- yeah. spoiler for the future yeah. I yeah, might I'm not do. I'm not I'm not going to spoil there is a thing that happens in that game we, we might end up doing an LP of this for yeah. Yeah. super hopped up so I would rather us be yeah. unfettered no, you got you got to go in blind to like some of the bigger events in that in order for them to hit as hard as they can I say do? one thing that's not the big spoiler and it is actually a thing that they they showed in trailers. You like Nazis? Okay. Um, you love them. Get, <laughs> buy them by the barrel full. Um, uh, the 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 author himself, Adolf Hitler, shows up in this game, and I, I won't tell you what exactly like the full scene for when he shows up, but it's pretty good. Yeah, it involves other major historical figures who might be um also previous actors before they became major historical figures, and it also involves just. A fucking fully Alzheimered out, just completely fucking brain wormed Adolf Hitler, and it's maybe my favorite moment in video games this entire yeah, that year. That was that was one of those things where like, this scene is just like going on and on and on, and I just like never wanted it to stop. Like, so, so good effort, but I that was a spoiler yeah, that, that was I wish quite I bit, hadn't known. So, um, if you guys don't have anything more to discuss about these games, <laughs> yeah, maybe, uh, maybe yeah. we should move Thanks. on. Maybe a round of egg and who knows? Yeah, <laughs> dick. <laughs> Oh yeah, very po- popular. Uh, certain powerhouse uh, countries. Well, okay, that, that celebrity that president. part's an Easter egg. They don't actually say it's him. You can just surmise that it's him. Oh, well, we can well, surmise great. now from all the clues you gave us. Wink, wink. But yeah, maybe we should move on. All right, moving on. Uh, number four, and I know that you guys like. We could at least talk about it because I know you all have played it. Mm-hmm. And again, by virtue of me not playing that many games, it cracks the list, and it's Destiny Two. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. So I, like, this I'm, is, this is might... a game we can all definitely talk yeah, about. Yeah, so this is like... A, yes, a... all of us can talk about this game. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, you're just here to what, look pretty. What Thanks. game can you talk about? Do you want to talk about the uh, game? I can talk can... about the... Pokemon Emerald 386 ROM hack that I completely 100%ed. Uh, okay, later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it's your turn. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, we we've talked so much about this, so like we can keep it brief. Uh, so we're like we're about like a month and a half removed from it. None of us have played it for a while. Yeah. Uh, what what's everybody's thoughts on it now? I that... got I got a question for you guys. Who here joined the Destiny subreddit when they started playing Destiny? Oh, I did for sure. I I, I go back to it once in a while because I really enjoy viewing the anger of others. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, it's gotten so good recently. So I, I, I know this is always a bad thing to like set your expectations for a game based on the community, but like I feel like I played that game and naturally became bored of it and then became angry at it because of the community. And normally I'll play a game, I enjoy it, and then go look at the community and like find the faults in it. This time I was like, this game's not like this game was fun initially. Got boring fast. Oh, now I hate it, and I'm I'm toxic. I don't think I ever just got like the community. I, I never got to the hate stage, but it's uh, it's it's quite shallow once you kind of start waiting in a little bit. I'm actually surprised because I I feel like some of my favorite moments this year involved all of us playing Destiny Two. Yeah, yeah. All, all when the times when we got all together to play that game were were magical. They were really yeah, like, good. We had so much. Yeah. Fun. Like, I feel the, like we've made those moments playing Quiplash though. Uh, I had maybe more fun playing Destiny than Quiplash sometimes. Not yeah. every like there are, there are a lot. I don't know. Like I remember Kelly like that that time where you, me, and Dave were playing, and you tried to bring your bike into the part of the game where like you clearly like was not designed for you to bring your bike in, but like you were just so stubborn. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then your you just exploded and you died. Like it was I don't know. It was I like, that too, but I feel like I'm I'm kind of like. Uh, tainted by the fact that I grew up playing MMOs, so like I know what it's like yeah. to enjoy a game just because people are there. I mean, I, I suppose, but it's bad game. I, I feel Good like friends. I feel like exactly. oh, no, like it's not a bad. Like it's not like, a bad game. No, I, feel like, I feel like a lot. I feel like a lot of your understandable sort of feelings towards this comes from Bungie's mishandling of that game over the last like since its release. Generally, it, it feels like every every new event that came out was either like shoddy or poor or didn't actually give anything of value. The expansion came out recently and it actually broke the fucking base it game. It broke compliance. Yeah. Which is a weird thing for yeah. a game to do in its DLC. For anyone who's not like online all the time, like basically Destiny 2 had uh, certain end game features like a raid that were available to people who bought the vanilla version. But then when they released the uh, expansion, they upped the level cap and subsequently increased the requirements to enter those yeah but you can only get to that level by buying the expansion See, that so, that is so, very sh that is the asterisk next to destiny 2 on all of our lists as like far that, yeah. that's, and that's the thing like, is like i like I, I will say it right now is like i i'm actively only going on my experience with destiny 2 when i'm declaring it on my top 10 list yeah but like yeah if you want to make the argument that like as an overall package of things that have happened since it come out came out like yeah it would probably drop on my list a couple of spaces sure well even for me like the gun control i'm so just for reference pc plays way better than console of course uh on the console version the gun controls were like only okay like i've played halo games that were better and it's from the same studio i felt like, like you, you you may be right i i felt like with the exception of the very first time I played Destiny 2 and like it felt like you're kind of getting your legs forward, it's a little bit wonky, like you're, you're figuring out the lighting and everything and how the game moves. I I don't know. Once I snapped 2 and I got my Mida multi-tool and I knew how to <laughs> pop off some headshots, it felt good. It felt consistently good. Yeah, and I mean, like I, I, I wanted to play Revolver or Hand Cannon or whatever, and it was impossible to play Hand Cannon on console. It's <laughs> apparently... Very, very good on PC, but I, I played like Borderlands on console, and the yeah. hand cannons were better. I, I think I, I, I would say like playing multiplayer with a hand cannon probably wouldn't work. I, I played half the game with a hand cannon single player. And I, I was think fine. that I think that it was a mechanically a very well made game. Uh, like it looked great. It yeah. It played. I don't know. I thought the gameplay was very solid, and I don't know. Like I had like the, the amount of the amount of fun that I had like with our silly group like trying like beating our heads against the wall in that raid which i never did finish uh the, the raid was bullshit that, that, <laughs> like before even the dlc kind of came out like the raid was kind of where i was like okay i'm done now and and that's only because 
I really like the strikes, which is like you have a dungeon, you have a boss at the end, you go with your friends, and you pew 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 yeah. things till well, they die. In the, yeah, because in those strikes, you're still playing Destiny. <laughs> exactly. And then the raid is just like, it's like running relay races and like fucking training your pet dog or whatever. Like, it's like a I million. Did like, I did like the gun. There were parts of the raid that I really liked, but I do overall but it was, you know, I, I kind You of, never get trained yeah. for the raid. I'm with, yeah, I'm exactly. with you, Dave, because it's like all of a sudden you're being asked to play this new game that yeah. like you have not been playing and you're like, it doesn't matter how good you are at Destiny. If you can't figure out how to play this new game before, like, you and her friends get frustrated but, like, and all quit, then you're done. When you chuckle fucks weren't playing Destiny 2 and I was still kind of on it, I couldn't find people to play with. So half the yeah. content of that game was unavailable to me. Yeah. yeah which, like... The lack of matchmaking and, like, and like like multiplayer uh, community support is, is really evident, I think, when you get more into that game. Yeah. All right. So, anyways, we can, we can move on from Destiny because we've talked so much about it this year. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I it's still a good enough experience for me to crack the top five all right moving on to number three uh this is a game that technically did not come out this year but it got re-released for the switch so i am for the record personal your personal list can have it fucking any game you want on it so so, so, so i'm hopping on oh man uh, i love demon souls for ps3 do it <laughs> i dare you hey kelly needs to frantically like reorganize his list uh <laughs> yeah so i i started playing just a couple weeks ago actually stardew valley and i i got hooked it, it is a fun game Mike, you and I are going to have some talks because okay. I actually, I downloaded it a couple I'm of days so ago. I'm so glad. I was so happy when I saw that message because I know that Bill, Bill has loved Stardew Valley for I'm, like the I'm going to my parents for the Christmas holidays for a couple of days. I'm going to probably bring the Switch. Yeah. I needed something just easy to play and yeah. that's Stardew Valley. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, so I loved Dark, not Dark Souls, uh, Don't Starve when it came out. Uh-huh. And Stardew Valley is like Don't Starve without like this n- injected stress of having your character die all the time mm-hmm. to everything and needing to constantly upkeep your character. Like when your character is essentially immortal, like the amount of fun you can have just sort of like, I don't know, just like it's, it's relaxing. Like I do you, do you know what Stardew Valley is? And it's, it's something that just yeah. kind of occurred to me earlier today. It's, it's, it's the perfect game for people who really like, like those clicker games. Cause really all you're doing in Stardew Valley, Matt just perked up really all you're, all you're doing in Stardew Valley is, it's just like, there are a number of like, routines and route things you can do that as you keep doing them you get routines, you get, you you get I mean, better and yeah. better at them and it gets bigger and bigger like i mean like, i'm pretty the more, sure the more times you play this game the bigger all your numbers get but at the same time too like you can sort of like i don't know, inject your own aesthetic into it you can make your character become good at the things that you want your character to become good at there's enough freedom of role play to have your character kind of act the way that you want but at the same time yeah you are just pursuing that goal of constantly like finding ways to maximize your own personal economy. Plus you get to fuck, right? Am I right? Dude, I haven't got I haven't unlocked those those uh those features yet, but you know it's 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 a long it's an got, epic raid. Got, got to play the long game. All right, Mike, uh, I, I just need to ask you who are you trying to who are you trying to woo? Uh, who, is your, who is the object well, of your affection? I woo! as as similar, similar <laughs> to you, uh, I had my eyes on Abigail until she started saying her homework's too hard, and I'm like, oh, nope, 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 nope. Uh, that's that's not a situation. Yeah, we hate would... anyone who has homework. I'm a 29-year-old man, and I've said less than a week ago that my homework has been too hard this semester. Like, I, so... I, took, I took that. I, I didn't want to take any chances with that. Um, but with you that could be statement. elected senator if you go for it. <laughs> hey, we're, we, that's not... It's, the election's still going on. Yet. We don't know Listen. that yet. Yeah, Never but I'm, but but now now I got my eyes on Leah, uh, you know, a girl gr- girl who lives uh, on her own in a cottage in the forest. No, uh, no, stay <laughs> far, stay far away. I yeah. don't think I've met Leah yet. Uh, you I... you you will you will. Okay, that's cool. All right, all right. Yeah. Cool. Anyways, that's that that's currently my my uh anyone but Haley, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, fuck Haley. Haley. Fuck Haley. Okay, Mike. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see you'll see you'll see why Haley uh, Haley's all right. All right. Uh, anyways, okay. Anything else from Stardew Valley? Uh no, it's a good game. It's it's fun. I like chuckle or what's it? Uh, Chucklefish is that the 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 company that makes it's, it? It's a dude. Like he gave oh. he gave his he gave his one man studio a name, but like it was it yeah. was a dude and some yeah, people that he knew. Like he's doing made music some other stuff. good games too. I re- played Risk of Rain a few years ago. Oh, yeah, that was that a lot of fun. Good. I never played mm. Starbound, but it looks like Terraria in space, and I like Terraria. So I don't know. Like it, I I would be willing to play Starbound at some point. Anyways, you got a type. I, t- I do. Uh, okay, Leah. so. These two games I know are going to be on other people's lists, so like I am okay deferring discussion to later because I've had a lot. Of, we've had a lot of discussion now. Okay, uh, we can defer to later. But my number two game is Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. <clears throat> I've heard of that. Yeah, I love Skyrim. 
<laughs> I love no, I love I love a beautiful game that takes the best things of games from my childhood and adds an uh, extra air of mystery and exploration and to them. Crafting. Yeah, and I think we will Dave, definitely talk about that. Dave in shakes list. his heathen fucking head over there. Yeah. I haven't said anything about Zelda yet. That's cool. Okay, Dave, <clears throat> Dave don't like. Uh, but <laughs> so we can, your numero uno. We can move on to my numero uno, which again I'm okay deferring, but this deserves talk. And I know Dave do like. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Horizon Zero Dawn, <clears throat> and holy crap, this game! This game blew me away. Like, it's very rare that I I play a game which like from start to finish, like I never get frustrated in, and like I'm constantly just like wanting to to get to the next bit because I'm just so into what is happening in the game at all times. And Horizon was that for me this year. I'm seeing a. a- trend with the games that you do and do not like you don't like getting frustrated and you like a game that's easy which is like no that's kind of surprising uh like horizon hey, zero dawn at least early on in that game i i played that combat that, wasn't that combat wasn't off the bat initially easy i played that game on hard mode from start to finish no yeah it's pretty like tactical which is surprising for like an open world well the thing game. the thing i don't like about wolfenstein is it made me have to lower the difficulty to like don't uh-huh. hurt me difficulty and i don't <laughs> like being that getting that fucking condescension from a game like but that's that's classic though that's like always been their thing right no and and i I will honestly say like just real quick going back to wolfenstein 2 if you're playing that game unless you have a masochistic streak i would honestly just say go through it on the easiest difficulty yeah like Like, you get the story beats out of it it's just as good you don't don't feel bad about playing a game on easy you're not there for the gameplay yeah i think i'm i i think like i just may be mad because i had to like admit defeat and lower that difficulty to like it's stupid it to condescension mode and i don't remember what i played horizon on i think it was the medium mist difficulty yeah. i thought it was too easy on the on anything but hard honestly yeah. but yeah. I, I beat it on hard as well yeah, yeah. that's well, well, let's, 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 mm-hmm. let's move on all right so yeah we can talk about horizon when it gets to to one of you guys turns because we've okay. had a lot of discussion already so yeah that is my top five of 2017 awesome. and over to matt matt do you do you have a list yeah or, uh, or, or i started thing? writing a list of my favorite actors who have the first name of john perfect and then i just wrote down mcconaughey and stopped like I know there's other ones. Wait, like, there's a John McConaughey. Wait, what? You're not thinking of Matthew McConaughey. Oh fuck! That's, that's, <laughs> that's your name. Your name is Matthew. Okay. How here's did you, what, are you? Are you? How did you do that? Here's what happened. So. <laughs> DJ, the year John McConaughey. D- DJ, run that back. What had happened was I was in parallel doing two. List uh-huh. one was uh, favorite John actors, another was favorite Matthew actors. You're lying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. and, and I was well, gonna I say John I... like was Amo, yeah, okay. right? <laughs> and then it was like, uh, is that like a funny enough bit? And then I stopped and started doing mad actors. Uh, and then I just said John McConaughey. So this is Matt and John so, actors, and so, some some a mix of the two. That's so funny. You're, you're not a computer, Matt. You can only wa- run one process at a time. All right, you can't uh, yeah. run multiple. Te- technically true. Uh, so ga- game of the year. My game of the year is uh, Pillars of Eternity. It is the game mm. of the year. It's the it game was, that you played. This year. It was the game that was released this year that I played this year. It is the game of the year. Uh, the, the one thing I will say before you start saying is that I didn't play this game this year, but I feel like if I did, it probably would be on my top ten as well. It it's, sounds like a fucking baller ass. It sounds Baldur's like it's got Gate two ghosts and stuff, which sounds cool. Yeah, it's got some spooky ghosts and shit like uh. I just really, really liked it, and you know, if you like Boulder's Gate, then you probably like yeah. this one because it has all that good feeling of like discovering a whole new world, trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it has all the nice things of being a game in 2017, so you're not. So I know because you know, I obviously I know Pillars of Eternity is like the original Pillars of Eternity was not this year. It's been out for a while. So is this like just like an HD remake, or yeah, is this like a, a brand new a game from the ground edition up? that came out? I think uh-huh. the uh, the second expansion pack came out this year. So, so like, is it counting. is it still like the same game, but just like the expansion, or like did they remake the whole game? They like retooled the combat or something like that. Okay. Uh, I don't really know because I just played it this year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but it's good. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I I like those games and like a game that it's a shame that none of us played that I think we would have all enjoyed playing that came out this year is Divinity: Original Sin yeah. Two. I wanna... I I watched my friend play it at his place recently and it, it looks really cool. Yeah. I do want to play through that game with Shar. I don't know if we're gonna stream it or do an LP of it, but I I like the idea of having like an antagonistic co op in a like a, a yeah. adventure game like that. Yeah. But I yeah like I grew up on those kind of games too. Like and I don't know they're they're fun. Like they it it is like endless amount of funs because like you discover the world and then you can like 
rediscover the world playing as a completely different type of character and have a totally different experience. Yeah, I I was considering playing it, but uh, I played the first one and got about three quarters of the way through and just kind of like fell off. But you yeah. get to play as a, a skeleton or a lesbian. Yeah, I think you could basically only... the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you can play as a skeleton lesbian. That's my objective but now. If you're, if, skeleton, how would... if you're procreate, if you're attracted to other skeletons, they all look virtually the same. No, that's. No, yeah, that's actually, what, that's actually, what you actually, you're actually me, I just think. There are some obvious gender differences between a male and a female skeleton. Plus, you can also Thank be you. emotionally attracted to a female and be a female. What? If you... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, who cares? I also wrote a list of my favorite action movies of 2007. Wait, I got a question, yeah. though, about your How many jo- of them star John McConaughey? Uh, like only, only three. I got a question about your John list. Goodman? Uh, yeah, he was on the list. Oh, nice. How high? Uh, I think it was two. Oh, that's good. Better or worse Jeez. than Malkovich? Uh, I put Malkovich below John. Look, it was just like in my head. I know. What G- about Cleese? Cleese? I know. John Cleese was also on the list. Okay, good. Cusack? Cusack? Uh, I think barely did not make the cut. Like was Leguizamo. Six. Leguizamo I put on there as a joke. Hell yeah. Because I think his last name is funny, not in a racist way. He like, also was you, Luigi in he, Mario, so yeah. mm-hmm. give a man props when what it's due. What about John Mahoney, the father from Frasier? Uh, did not make the list. Ah, uh, dang okay. it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, it's an honor just to be nominated. All right, here's a list of my favorite action movies. Uh, this is just so I can talk about the number one on this list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do it. Number five, Fate of the Furious. That came out this year. That was a good Ooh. movie. I haven't seen that. Uh, it's, it's real oh, good. <laughs> yeah. It's good. I mean, I don't think it was as good as uh, <laughs> six or seven, but like it is. Uh, okay, let let Matt deliver his yeah, list. I don't care yet. about your commentary on yeah. this one. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you can if you want to. Uh, it's, <laughs> Uh, so uh, I, w- I would say that it is not as good as five, six, seven, uh, but it is still better than basically any superhero movie, uh, except for one. Uh, I also put down Baby Driver on here. I don't know I just liked it. And I Everyone keeps telling list. me that's bad. I don't uh, like no, that's Dave. Dave okay. keeps telling me it's bad. Dave, Dave keeps telling me it's bad, and he doesn't like Breath I of the Wild. It. I so haven't maybe. seen it, but that seems like it's going to come out on Netflix pretty soon. I'm pretty and sure I'm it should be pretty much out there. Uh, you know, I just like to, I just like to imagine it's the sequel to Drive, and it's his kid. Yeah, no, that's basically okay. it. Uh, much better uh, movie. It's just like a, <laughs> the fun, fun little movie. Uh, it's musical. And... I'm, I'm glad someone had fun in that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it seemed like a lot of people had fun in that movie. Uh, I know it's just me. You're yeah, like the only one I know who doesn't you. like it. <laughs> uh, this is surprising that it's this low on the list. Uh, John Wick two. Oh, yeah. uh, I, love I love John, John Wick. I too. haven't seen. I love, I, I love, I love John Wick one, and that I, was, yeah. I would take yeah. the plunge because I was also on the fence of like, ah, oh, it's too long. It's just going to be. A, and then I watched it, and I was like, this is a, amazing and a, my favorite movie ever. Would you oh. okay, Matt? Uh, compare it to John Wick one. Uh, John Wick two has everything that John Wick one uh, has, except for like more so. Okay, so it kind of gets like more ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and but it loses that original charm of like. Oh, like they just pay everyone in gold and shit, and there's no real explanation for it. They start to flesh out the the world of John Wick, where literally everyone is an assassin, and it yeah. So it's sometimes, got some moments. Sometimes when I'm walking to work, I just put on that soundtrack and pretend I'm ventilating fools. Like, oh <laughs> fuck, you just reminded me. Okay, so I'm gonna drop uh, I don't know, Baby Driver, and put in Good Time instead. Uh, oh, Good Time, I guess might not be a typical action movie. Uh, it's just uh, Robert Pattinson. Uh, he's trying to get his uh, mentally touched brother out of a jail because... Uh, oh, I know this movie, yeah. Yeah, it is fucking awesome. The cool. reason why I just remember that is uh, OPN does the soundtrack <laughs> for uh, for that movie. So it's got some extremely like loud blares and shit. Nice. And uh, it is just like nonstop, go, go, go. I fucking love that movie. I'm so, glad he didn't give up after being typecast as Edward the Vampire. Yeah, he's doing everything <laughs> in his. It, he's doing good, actually. Yeah, yeah, everything in his power to not do that anymore. He looks like a, like a, like a real degenerate piece of shit in this good. one. So good, I'm glad. Uh, I would highly, highly recommend uh, Good Time. Uh, I put in Logan in here as my number two. Oh, yeah. that was a good, uh, good movie. It is like the only superhero movie where like I don't feel bad uh, when I say, "Hey, that was a good movie." <laughs> uh, so uh, everyone's already seen it. 
But, I haven't uh, seen it yet, but well, I, you should oh go man, see it. Yeah, really good. I would, I would recommend that, and that does not come lightly for me because you know how I fucking hate superhero. It's movies. not even really a. Su- I mean, it is, but like, it's barely superhero. It's movie. got Wolverine in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know, like, I know the character. <laughs> during, during the marathon, I'll just put it on the screen next to the main no, it's, screen. It's, it's, it's like probably maybe my favorite movie I've seen that came out this year, and I saw it on Netflix. Like, didn't expect much. Oh and man, I, I fucking so, loved it. It was so good. Like I, I started off like doing homework, having it in the background. By the time it was done, I was just like, "No, this is the most important thing in the room right now." It was, it's a yeah. fucking fantastic movie. Not even superhero movie, not even action movie, just a good movie. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's good, right? We can all agree. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what what could possibly beat it? Uh, Brawl in Cell Block ninety nine. Woo! Hell of a movie. I'll take your uh, word for it. It's got uh, Vince Vaughn in it. Why? I know what you're thinking. Wait, Vince Vaughn doesn't he suck? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> that was uh, what normal, I was thinking. Normally, I, I that was in my head. Agree with you, but uh, remember that Vince Vaughn is like six five or something, right? And the whole movie is just this guy who goes through like progressively worse and worse prisons, beating the shit out of people. Uh, there's a does reason he, why he is does he it. the guy? He he is the one who starts the brawl oh. in uh, Cell Block ninety nine, which is a secret a secret section of a maximum security prison. Uh, this sounds like a video game. It it is it is like extreme B. Uh, kind of stuff, but it's one of those movies that take the tropes of like a B movie, like a B prison movie, and just ramp it up to a hundred. And um, there is a particular scene. I don't want to really, uh, like, I don't want to spoil it. But he does something really terrible to a body, and I actually jumped out of the my seat and went, "Yes, that's what I want to see." <laughs> uh, so I would highly, highly recommend that movie. All right, I, I recently this. saw it. Uh, he gives am... it a proper Christian burial. Ooh, he does not. <laughs> okay. he, uh, there is. I, I just want to say that Norris's bedroom is wall to wall wedding crasher posters, all different ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I love Vince Vaughn with all of my heart. It's all what, different. What's really weird he is, is my wife is I have a body interview. pillow. The, ah. you remember the interview? Yeah, I kind do. Of. With Kim Jong Il. Fuck! 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 The internship. Oh. That's the one. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Kim John- Robert De Niro. Matt, 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 what, what's the I, one Matt, where I love you. You're off your game tonight. The internship uh, is the one where he and oh, I'm assuming Owen, probably Owen Wilson. It's Owen Wilson. Uh, entered for Google. Yeah, basically. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, what's the one that uh, with uh, Robert De Niro? Is that That's like called the, the Intern? intern yeah, I think. Okay. which is uh, actually a pretty good movie. I'll the, take your word for it. It's like you know that what's that movie? Uh, this. So he's been in We're a movie Godfather called two. The Intern. Yeah, and it's the just internship. like The Godfather Two. Meet. The Fockers. Now it's the one with the guy who gets old and has a midlife crisis, and it's really sad. Meet the Fockers. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's exactly. It's not what the movie's uh, called. Daddy's Home Two. Uh, my also on my list. Yeah, he's home too. Okay, I'm done. All right. That was the Matt divergence. Uh, oh Kelly. yeah, and the ROM hack, the Pokemon Emerald 386. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't ROM talk hack. about that. Uh, it has all of them. Uh, it's got Love Disc. It's got uh, the only Skitty. Rum Pig is there too. Uh, Rump Rump Loom. and all your friends. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, it's got it's got them all. So um, check Catch it out. Catch them. Catch the fever. I don't think it's called Drift Loom, but it's the balloon Pokemon that steals kids and sends them to the forest. Hmm. This Pokemon's dark. Yeah, I like I like the, the 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 Pokedex entries that make it not a kids game anymore. Yeah, it's cool when it's like clearly like no one is reading them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's like what what can I put in here that no one will This read. Pokemon acknowledges that life has no meaning and everything's just gonna die in the mm, end. It's yeah. got all my favorite Pokemon like fapping and yeah, yeah, yeah. Lorino and uh... yeah. I uh, so my list is ten because I think the rest of us are ten, right? Dave is eight. I am ten. You all are right. ten. Top eight. Who ever heard of ten? That? Yeah, Dave, don't argue. Dave, you're a strong seven. <laughs> <laughs> the wow. personality brings it up, though. The voice caps it off. You're not helping, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> uh, so uh, I feel kind of bad about this, but shout out to uh, Simulacra, which is like the one indie game I played this this year. I actually had a lot of fun watching you and uh, Char play Simulacra before I like fell into like a fever coma. No, but, that's like, cool. Yeah. It was uh, it was just an interesting game that I kind of wish I played on phone because it looks like a spooky, scary phone game. Um, but yeah, so check that out. It's pretty good. The mystery. It's, it's on it. my list of things I, I should play but probably won't. I would download it on your phone and just... You've got a long commute to school, don't you? Yeah. Do that and then scream on the, on the bus. I already do that. They don't <laughs> like it. Uh, so my uh, number 10 is Batman the Enemy Within, which is the Telltale game. 
It was. Oh. Did that come out this yeah, year? It's yeah, it's the I second thought... one because there was two Telltale oh. Batman games. Wait, right? did the first one not come out this first year? First one's been out for a while. Again, personal list doesn't matter. You know what? Yeah. Fuck it. The first Batman Telltale game because it changed the game and it didn't take a million years to load their last time on. And I'm sure the enemy within is just as good. So sue me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should kick it off and put Simulacra as ten. I like Batman. Uh, number. <laughs> Do do you, David? I'm just do saying. you? I'm just saying. Come on. <laughs> um, you see, they're doing Jack the Ripper versus Batman. That looks dope as fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, get, get on with it. Yeah. Uh, number nine is stay on target. Number nine is Friday the Thirteenth: The Game, which is basically Dead by Daylight, but it's on here because it sparked uh, Shar and I watching literally every Friday the Thirteenth movie. Awesome. Um, which was like a highlight of our relationship so far. All right. Cool. So there you go. One, one question about that game. Can you throw a teen through a plate glass window? Yes. Fuck yeah. Hell All yeah. Right. All you, right. And they keep adding things you can do to teens. Like nice. now, now you can like find a knife on a table and stab them through. You can, can you can you either smoke drugs or have sex for extra points as a teen? Or no, no? it is oh, okay. not the board game last yeah. night on Earth, unfortunately. That would be like the best Friday the 13th game is it was like four minutes of like idealism for the teens yeah. in the game. And like you can get points by like doing dumb things or fucking. That be would be great. cool if, like, Jason has to prep for the match, and during that time, the teens have to fucking smoke as many drugs as they can. Okay, can you confirm for me, there is one Friday the 13th movie where literally they have watched their friends get murdered, and then they just decide to go skinny dipping for no reason at all? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. I good, still movies. Think. good movies. Good movies. Good um, movies. So, yeah, that was a, a really good... I mean, it's like it's a poorly constructed game, but it's fun if you're playing with people that talk to you, and... The Friday the 13th movies are dope. Uh, Injustice 2. Heck yeah. Because I liked uh, bodying Dave with Aquaman. Ouch. <laughs> I played that game once and I got kicked. I got my ass kicked by literally every single one of you. Seems like a fun game, but fuck that game. Yeah, yeah on- my brain blocked that out. I did play that game. So uh, it's on the bottom of my list. Nice. Okay, we're going straight to number one in the group list. Yeah. I mean, oh, beyond yeah. beyond that, like I've n- I don't know if I can imagine a fighting game outside of like skull girls that has added so much content in like such a short amount of time like they've added alternate skins with full voice packs for characters they've added like did, is five, that a recent thing 10 new did? characters they had nine they've, they're going to be adding nine characters in total but they've made a lot of good choices with that it it, it like i'll just say injustice now because it's on my list too but that is like the most complete full price triple a fighting game package that i've ever seen uh, for a fighting game and i i think that it needs to be the standard to which other companies hold themselves as far as like single player mm-hmm. content as far as like uh extra content downloadable shit like yeah. i mean it's also like newbie friendly which yeah. is great like yeah. it looks fun to play if you don't know what you're doing which oh, is there's, yeah there's plenty of fun to be had even if you don't know that much about fighting games it's true shit, so. i mean i i did enjoy playing it but like and i know like l- absolutely nothing and like games. they're 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 like reaching for a lot of their characters, which is cool because I don't want to see another iteration of like all the standard DC characters again. Oh yeah, I mean like they added the Adam just recently, and I thought that yeah. was awesome. Good choice. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they added Plastic Man. I do that like how they decided to go with like full steam ahead with their new alternate universe, which is I think exclusive to the games. Mm-hmm. Um, you didn't put Injustice Two on your list. I I mean I yeah I I played it and. To be honest, like I guess I'm just not as into fighting games. Uh, I didn't really dislike it, but like it didn't really stick. I mean, make- this is on my list from not owning the game and <laughs> playing it once with Dave. Oh, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, which I don't know if is an indication of how good it is or how bad the rest of the games on my list are. Uh, so number seven is Destiny Two. We kind of talked about yeah. that game a little bit. Yep. Um, a couple of these I haven't beaten or really played too much, but I've gotten the flavor of them enough to put them on my list. Your own list, do what you want. So number six is Persona 5, because having played through all of Persona 4, I see like how good P5 is compared to it. I, I have that game on my list as well. Do you want to talk about it now or wait? Uh, Who's got it higher? Uh, like, mine is lower on my list. Yeah, let's talk about it now and then. Okay, so yeah. like literally every frame of that game feels like somebody cared about it. Yeah, absolutely. That, that game is like... The initial thoughts that came to my mind is just like style or substance, but it's not that. It's just like it's a game that has good substance, but it understands the importance of style. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, mm. it's every every like end of battle screen is kind of cool and like the very best kind of anime. 
and like there's multiple of them like even like you press pause and it opens up this fucking dope ass pause music the menu looks like graffiti painting like it all it all just feels fucking rad it's so many things that other developers are like let's not waste time on that we need to focus on the core of the game and not like just throw a slap a bar for the health and it's like no fuck you i'm drawing this health bar frame by frame and like yeah it's just so it's, and the music is amazing as always it's it's almost like atlas has been working on this game painstakingly since 2010 yeah we, and, it, and it fucking shows and absolutely it fucking deserves to be on a list um it's, it's like it, it's it's not super high on my list for no other reason than it was a long game i didn't have a chance to really dig into but i still put 20 hours into it yeah which is more than some other games on my list it's and uh, it's 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 fucking great it's it's kind of bad because like the only reason i'm not playing it right now is because i'm trying to be like creatively diverse with the things that i'm working on and i'm i know i'm not going to make any content with p5 but i'm like it's sitting there on my shelf i'm like i can't wait until i can play you you're just I, sitting there waiting for me baby i think it's gonna be my early 2018 project is to is to get back up from where i was playing and and try to and finish that game yeah so uh that was six i think yeah six uh number five is legend of zelda breath of the wild Good game. Um, which is only that low, I feel like, because I haven't played that much of it. I haven't gotten into any of the like main bosses. I've mostly been exploring. But I've been streaming it, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and it's another game that does a lot of things that just don't need to be there. Like it, 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 it does so many mechanics that don't add anything to the overall gameplay other than like, huh, I wonder if I can do this. And then you do it, and then it works. And you're like, that was really fun. That fucking rules, yeah. I'm glad I did that. Yeah, like... Uh, number oh, four, <laughs> yeah, I'm at four, right? Uh, is the surge? Heck yeah! Uh, mm. Dave and I have been playing it for the channel, and that game continues to surprise me. It it is uh, way better than a lot of people have given it credit for, and it's a it's a market improvement over the other game released by that studio, and and just I think what was the other game? By Lords, Lords of the, the Fallen. Fallen. Not a good game. Not a good no. game at all, but The Surge I, is great. I think. It, like, earns the title of a soul's, like, yeah. beyond a shadow of a doubt. It's like, we, we keep playing and we're like, yeah, no, okay, I think we understand the game now, and then we get a new thing, and it's like, oh, no, we definitely didn't. This is fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited. Deep mechanics and shit, yeah. Like, it, the level exploration is on par with, like, Dark Souls and, and Dark Souls 3, and, like, I don't know. It's it's it looks visually appealing. We're playing on console and I think I think it's on PC and it would look amazing on PC. Um that studio did such a great job learning their lesson. And yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad there's someone out there who's not just from software doing a, a cool kind of that game. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm really excited for us to beat that game so I can I can add it to the list of games that I play over and over and over again. <laughs> uh third uh, I think some of you might have this on your list. Is Horizon Zero Dawn? Oh, yeah. yeah, I've heard of it. See, yeah. I'm surprised you put it that high. Because I know. Because it sounded when you talked about it like you didn't like it very much. Yeah, I mean, I like to play the devil's advocate. It's a solid game. It did what it wanted to do. And I, there were aspects of the game that were kind of standard that I don't think was amazing. But it was a really good game. And I played it all the way through, which is very surprising for 2017. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Speaking of not finishing a game, my number two, Neo. Oh, yeah. Because all of the things I said for the Surge, but Japanese level-based grindy game that I love <laughs> so much, and mechanics that are in itself creative enough that they made the souls, like, feel fresh. Like, there are, there are like weird combos that you do in Neo to make your character successful. That good, good ass game. Lots of customization. Lots of different weapons. Yeah, and shit. just like, fucking so good. Yeah. The only like literally the only thing I can think of that was a because like the progression is different than a Dark Souls game. Sure it is. Yeah. It's level based. It's mission based. It's going back to the same area, but like in an encapsulated mm -hmm. mission. Mm -hmm. But like the progression just feels so good, and like it never really feels repetitive because you're oh. constantly growing and they've added two new weapons that I really want to play, but haven't had a chance to jump onto. And DLC shit. Um, yeah, I think it's either DLC or they just patched in. It's the like two different weapon classes or yeah. Oh shit. Like entirely different move sets. Oh, and like that game is all about the move sets. Yeah, it really is. Um, 
more so than a Dark Souls game. Yeah. Um, how far did you get? Uh, I almost finished it. Okay. I like I started getting to the point where you're about to kill Nobunaga. Okay. Which like that's spo- you're, you're spoilers. Fighting, you're I, fighting fucking Nobunaga. Yeah. Spoilers. A Japanese game based in feudal Japan has Nobunaga as the main villain. <laughs> Got to cool. stop his ambitions. Mm-hmm. This is true. Like I think I'm near the end. That's and then my number they... one game. Nobunaga's ambition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Paradox game takes a thousand hours to play. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was incredible. My only downside is that it kind of burned my PS4 because it oh. hates that game. It's too tough for it. Yeah. Wait, is that the PS4 you sold me? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> it's the other PS4. Like I was sitting, I was sitting, I was playing that game at like three in the morning, and Char was sleeping. And I went to a menu, and the PS4 was like, "All right, I'm gonna now announce myself because whatever you're doing right now is too hard for me." Fan I had, time. I had that happen to Wolfenstein 2 once or twice when I was playing through it. it seems yeah, I like... with me with uh, Horizon. <laughs> yeah. I need to get that pro, babe. Hey, guys, there's mm. a problem with PS4s, I think. <laughs> yeah. Don't buy. Don't buy. Don't Listen, buy. the fact uh. that the fan turns on is a good sign. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Better than the other alternative, yeah. Um, and you're number one. Uh, my number one, I'm actually <gasps> curious, is have, have either of you played this or have it on your list, is Resident Evil 7. Ooh. That high? Fuck. Wow. It is... Because... I played six and it was bad. Like objectively, not a good game. <laughs> so, ha- do you, any of you have it on your list? No, no I haven't no. played it's it. A, I really is, want to. Talk. So, okay, so I will talk about it. Resident Evil Seven is what this series needed. Oh. Yeah. Because Resident Evil Six is objectively terrible. Yes. And Resident Evil Seven. So I think last year or whenever PT came out, I put it on my list because even though it was a demo. It was probably the best game that came out that year. Resident Evil 7 is all of the best things about PT, all of the best things about Resident Evil, and pretty much all of the best things about a horror game that should be in a game, all wrapped into a beautiful-looking experience. I'm, I'm really glad that you liked it so much, because I think that Resident Evil, like, there are some good things about that franchise that it seems to just get like bogged down in so much of the garbage that they put in those games. And it, it, it seems like they, they found what they needed to yeah. have found with it. Do you, yeah. do, you know, do you know what I'm thinking right now? A bit, bit of a tangent. I'm feeling like this is, an, this is a good candidate for a 2018 Let's Play. I also agree. I think I would, one of yeah, you, I'd be down for sure. I think like, we strap a VR headset onto Dave, yeah, throw him in Tari 7. Why, why, why are you I think we force, we force Dave to play this game why because do you think Dave? <laughs> no one loves horror games in this group more than David. Look, you all think I'm a big baby who can't stomach horror, but... Uh, we'll see. All right. um, but <laughs> no, no, Dave, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's... <sighs> It's weird because, like, I personally don't think that game does, like, it doesn't deserve to be called a Resident Evil only because of all the baggage that comes with a Resident Evil game. Yeah, like, that That admittedly, like, put me off from ever wanting to try it. But in the, it deserves to be in the Resident Evil series because of how, like, influential Resident Evil is. And this game just changes it. Like, and the best part is, like, it when you play it, it makes you think it's not going to be a Resident Evil game. And then you get your first puzzle and you're like, oh my god, this is a Resident Evil game. And like all of the nostalgia you have, like RE1 and RE2 just come flooding back as they start introducing all of these layers of like weird mutants, like fucking bugs that attack you. Like all of these things that RE1 had, but wrapped in like a modern 2017 package. And it's just like, it's... I, at no point during that game was I like, oh, you know what? I'm tired of first person or they, they didn't they did something wrong. Like it just keeps mixing it up. It just keeps layering it on. It's just so good. I, I need to. You don't own it. Do you like you bought it from someone else? Right? I bought it from yeah. someone else. Damn it. Like I need to. I need I to, can I borrow need to it get again. That. Yeah, I need That's to. Good though. Like I'm I'm really glad that you liked it so much because, yeah, that gives me hope. And I think that. All of us are kind of like excited now a little. Like I know like Norris and I at least are like from hearing you gush about it so much. It's $3 yeah. at Best Buy right now. Think, <laughs> How so. about that? We could, yeah. we, could prob- we could probably solve that problem, yeah. Can the can the podcast fund that for the LP? Well, we'll we'll look into our budget. We'll see if we can make room for some hey, other stuff. Are, I, might have gonna... to, I might have to move some stuff around a little bit, but I'm sure it's possible. When are we going to start getting that YouTube money? Um, um, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, we, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I wonder. Um, also, um... <laughs> An initial thing, like, I played this game with Char all the way through. Usually when I play horror games with somebody, I can, like, connect, disconnect myself from it, and I don't get as scared. 
there were moments where I would, I, she kept yelling at me. She's like, walk down that hallway. I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. I am not moving. And yeah. she's like, you need to keep playing the game. I'm like, no, I'm going home. <laughs> you are home, but I, I, I can't move. Sorry. Better home. <laughs> let's save and let's go watch fucking Seinfeld for a sec. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a really good game. You, yeah, you've, you've got me wanting to play that game. I'm sad. That it's like, it's actually of all the games this year that came out that I didn't get a chance to play. It's probably number one on my games list that I wish I did. <clears throat> yeah. That I makes any sense. Yeah. That's number yeah. one. David, sir. Oh, yeah, that's me. You now stand atop the podium. Um, so uh, a couple of things to shout out first. Uh, Battlefield 1. I played that for the first time this year. Um, I really enjoyed my time with it. However, I can almost definitively say that I will not be playing any more dice shooters after this. That's fair. Um, <laughs> besides all the things of Battlefront, it's just the fact that Battlefield 1 has a season pass that is a year old now that still is not complete. That I wow. think is pretty, pretty wow. whack. Especially when they have like a yearly release of these fucking games. So Are, don't seasons come like four in a pack? But isn't that a good thing though? Like, <laughs> sorry, like... Go ahead, like on that point, like isn't that a good thing that like they're still making new content after a year or? Do well, no, no, they promised all this at the beginning, but they didn't put a, a definite release schedule really. Oh, okay. And I just think it's bad. I think they should have done better. And by the time I got the game, all my friends were done with it. So eh, yeah. Anyway, the problem with jumping into multiplayer games like that, like after. You, like after the fact that like after most people get out is like the only people left are the hardcore players oh yeah and so then, it's hard as fuck yeah, yeah. um i wrote down street fighter not five uh <laughs> so um <laughs> damn the most fun ice I've had cold this, i've had a lot of fun playing street fighter this year but it was predominantly street fighter 4 which i went back to and then street fighter 2 on your on your sense classic here in the, the old podcast studio um and those were good times with friends moving on to my my list proper um Number eight, I have uh, Fortnite Battle Royale. Oh, I did play a bit of that after, like, I listened to the, that episode where you talked about it, yeah. and you inspired me to play uh, a little bit. How about this, Mike? Did you realize that Fortnite is a, is a play on words? Uh, I Cause did. Because you, like, you build forts? Yeah, because... <laughs> yeah. I mean, it took a while, but, but it's sunk in. <laughs> I, I, like, I think uh, yesterday I realized what that yeah. what that pun is, yeah. D Wait, D I'm so David. <laughs> Wait, yeah. I'm sorry. Did you have Fortnite on your list? Battle Royale. Oh, never mind. Yeah. I only played Battle Royale, and like it was funny because after listening to you, yeah, after you guys talk about it, and Kelly, I think he said like, "Well, I kind of want to play PUBG, but I don't want to spend money or I don't have a good computer." And yeah. I'm just like, "That's me." <laughs> I, I, I think they actually like did did PUBG so dirty by just like releasing the same game for free, like on yeah. consoles. Like, <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? And it's so good. Like, PUBG it, would be my viewing game of of the year. I, I yeah. watched a. Of yeah, I it's watched a, really a lot of PUBG this yeah. year. Yeah. It's a fun game to watch. Probably more fun to watch than play, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it, like, perhaps. It's, it still weirds me out that Fortnite, I don't think, has released their main game as, like, outside of a early access. <laughs> they've pivoted to uh, <laughs> Yeah, they've things. pivoted. Yeah. Because, the, because the main game is not free to play. It's like a founder's yeah. pack thing you have to yeah. buy, right? I only so. got it. I only played it because I had a code from a friend. I, I didn't even play that long. I played probably three hours one weekend, but I, I still had good fun for that and i'll probably never play a battle royale game again afterwards yeah so. right. yeah it, it, it's nice because like i've always like you, if you ever have that like, craving to play a battle royale just to see what it's like but you don't want to commit like it's perfect because yeah it is free um so that was number eight number seven the surge uh not really a game i played but i've been playing it with kelly and commentating yeah. and um what can i say it's uh it's a, a robo like mech suit version of dark souls kind of uh, it's, it's kind of a dark dystopian world where uh, you, there's a cure for paralysis, but you have to sign up for uh, a profession, a career first. I, I really, I really <laughs> watching, watching your guys' first episode, I really enjoyed just like him being strapped down into a chair and having what looks to be some of the worst fucking things happen to him. Yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty good. Um, so I'm excited to see where that takes us. Uh, number six, I put down Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, I have a lot of criticisms of this game. I didn't. I don't know how much I played. I would probably generously say 20 hours, and then I just kind of, like, was, like, I'm not going to finish it. I think this is a game where, like, like depending on your predilections, you like it or you don't, and yeah. not to say anything good or bad for either choice, but... I, I think the Zelda license or the Zelda theme really carries this game. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would particularly be remarkable mm -hmm. otherwise. See, I... I mean, yeah, oh. I I disagree, oh. I disagree with that, but, like, the I only... think I think we'll talk more about it when it comes to Norris's yeah. list, but, like... But yeah, I, I I agree with Norris's point that it 
it, it's more polarizing, I guess, than I thought. Like, it's not it's not going to be for ever. And like, they I, were. I, I don't even think it's polarizing. I literally think I'm the only person who doesn't <laughs> like Breath of the Wild. I don't know though. Like, there there are definitely. I could be convinced. There are, <laughs> there are some comments down below if you don't like Breath of the Wild. There are moments. You a beer mat. There were moments of that True. game I'll that I found <laughs> where I was like, oh, I really like don't like the direction that they went with this, and I could see how like if that is the kind of thing that is not your thing at all then, like, those moments would completely overpower whatever good things the game has going for it. So, like, yeah, I, I understand. Like, it is it is it is not for everyone, but I think that if it is for you, it it's yeah. really for you. I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, I took Char to the Zelda Symphony when it was oh, here. Yeah. I heard that was good. It was really good, but then they did Breath of the Wild, and I had to close my eyes because I didn't want spoilers. Oh, because oh, they, they... they show gameplay in the background. No, what oh, they, do they? No, what they do is they'll play basically like a song for a game while playing the entire story of the game in the background. Oh, okay. So like Char got um, Skyward Sword ruined. She got Ocarina of Time ruined. She got Wind Waker ruined because oh, they just bad. played through the whole... Yeah. And I'm like, not me. I'm not watching Breath of the Wild. Because, damn, like... Wait, wait how does that get it ruined, though? Yeah, like... I mean, I, yeah, like, no, I did eventually tell her, hey, like... you know you beat Ganon at the end of all yeah, those I'm games. Like, yeah, I'm like, Link comes what? back, Zelda's alive, you kill Ganon. Like, <laughs> it is it is really hard in most of those games to to really... Like, I, I I can't think of a thing I could say right now to any of you that hasn't finished there's Breath of the Wild that would spoil There's that never game. been a plot twist in a Zelda game. Like, uh, it's, like, if you came in completely unaware, and I mean, like, completely blind unaware, like, the child-to-adult transition Ocarina of Time would have yeah. been pretty cool. Yeah. But, like, everyone knew that going in. She didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. that was, She that's... saw that, and she's like, wait, what? Yeah. Everyone protects Char. She's that's good for her, though. Like, good for her, like. Uh, blinders on for like 20 years well yeah. okay so funny again sorry tangent funny story when she played it as a kid she got the first three um like jewels, di- jewels never never thought the ne- game was over thought the game was over. Wow. <laughs> that rule because she I, told me that and i'm like fuck we're playing that game and then i be- i got the first three jewels and then like life got busy and i'm like i swear there's more as, as anyone who's listened to me talk about Zelda, I still don't know what happens after the Water Temple in No Green at Time. <laughs> and you never will, Dave. <laughs> no, I never will. Uh, number five is this Destiny 2 with an asterisk. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, number four is Mass Effect Andromeda. Nice. Oh, I, I'm so, I'm I don't care. I, I, thought that, I thought you'd put that no, on I'm that glad. List. I'm glad. I don't I care hear. what anybody has to say about this game. It is actually a, a good game. And it's a fine addition to the Mass Effect franchise. Dave, I over the course of this year, I have been moved by your passion. I am <laughs> I'm going to buy that game when I find it in some bargain bin for fifteen dollars next <laughs> year. I think, I think I'm going to borrow yeah. Dave's copy, but like oh, yeah, just borrow, I might just, yeah, uh, next like, year I'm going to borrow your copy for free and and go through that game. I think yeah. because of because of your defense for it, I think I I think it deserves a playthrough to see how I feel. I, I really, I mean, I think I came in at the right time. Honestly, I missed most of the uh, of the of the backlash and like the the buggy parts of it that were later I can kind of patched out, but everything else I enjoyed. It felt like a Mass Effect game, uh, you know, jank, jank and all, right? Yeah, so. yeah I mean, yeah. final Mass Effect game. They ain't making any more of those. No, well, yeah, not at all. <laughs> no, Dragon Age. No, but maybe. I, yeah. no, I'm, I actually, I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed it, and it's, it's good that we have like somebody that we personally know who, yeah, who had a good time with it. No, I mean today, like this year was one where I realized that like your own opinion can really bring you over the edge because like i mean the surge does not get good reviews the mass fan drama did not get re- good reviews i mean so. it also depends on what the like community is saying because like yeah. i'm sure going into the surge people are like fuck that company and their bullshit paladin dark souls yeah. bullshit yeah uh and then with andromeda andromeda people tweeted bad gifs of the character animations they're like fuck that i'm not paying bioware for bad animations yeah and then by the time I got it, it was twenty dollars. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. I paid twenty dollars for band animations. Uh, number three is uh, Neo. Uh, didn't finish it, but that is like um, mechanically very pleasing game to yeah. play. Uh, it, it actually might even have better combat than Dark Souls. It like, does. That's possible. Yeah. That's not even that's, a question. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's actually easily possible. Yeah. It's basically... Um, it's a more combat-oriented Dark Souls, if Ninja that makes Gaiden, sense. Dark Souls. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden Dark Souls, yeah. I think we said enough about it. So uh, number two, Injustice Two. Uh, Injustice Two is my favorite fighting game of the year. It also includes uh, all the DC characters that I love. I mean, technically, Street Fighter Two came out this year. Um, 
for the like the 16th time. <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't count if it has not been modified. From the, oh, Street actually, Fighter, no, Super Street yeah. Fighter Two, Hyper Fighting, the World Warriors. Like, I mean, I put oh, a, yeah. I put a re-release game on my list. So if you want to put Norris's Street top Fighter, ten are just going to be games from the NS- SNES Classic. <laughs> um, I think Injustice Two actually has a better campaign than any of the DC movies pretty much. Like, I, I would, or like I would at least a better a better foil, a better idea of what a like a, a, a broader universe DC movie would include and, and look like. It, and it like, seems like it's a more interesting idea for a narrative with those characters. It's than like Batman anything. versus Superman but good. I mean I yeah. I brought up Plastic Man only because I recently read a comic from the Injustice theories about plastic man and he seems like a dope ass character uh so now a little quiz for you kelly uh who do you like better elongated man or plastic man <laughs> i i don't think this is a trick question, question kelly. this same? is a trick question <laughs> i like luke better luke is a better character because he's he's tormented by his uh thief father who was kicked out of the justice league <laughs> and also oh, darth, fuck you and also darth vader <laughs> um number one uh shouldn't be really be a surprise but it's horizon uh, mm. yeah. I think that's just a game that I would easily recommend to anybody. I think uh, it, it really, I think, is like an essential for the PS4 at this time. It's it's even like the a game that I think is a reason to buy a PS4. So yeah. it, it seems like it's a game that has no faults. It's well, I, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to go so far as say it's perfect, <laughs> but like it's as close to a perfect game I, I, as I played. Its this main year. fault I is do, that it's, I don't think it's perfect, but it's a game that has no faults. Like it's, I, it's a weird difference that I'm trying to make, but I hope you guys get. No, what I'm trying I, to say. I definitely do because like I would, I would. Be, that, that's how i think of it too like i look back on like my time when i played horizon before i before i lent it out to you guys and like i was like yeah i did not have any like sour memories from that game at whatsoever i have yeah. literally one but it's like the pettiest sour uh memory about it you didn't like the emperor tried to tried to hit on what's her name no no my i mean yeah that's kind of garbage but the fact that the bonus armor doesn't look like master chief when you go oh, you're right absolutely that armor Actually, looks so yeah. fucking dope yeah. when you see it on like the dais and then you get it and it's like oh it's the same armor she just kind of took it apart game. and then got like glued it on to her existing armor it was also a really long quest line to get that armor yeah too, so. and then you get uh, like a hexagonal uh shield around can't, yourself can't, can't get frustrated if you don't do the side quests <laughs> like you can tap your head while doing that, but it doesn't mean we're gonna get the meme over yeah. our audio format. There, I, got it. I, yeah, I think, I think, I, got I think it. they yeah. got it. I think our yeah. listeners got it. Yeah, exactly. It was I didn't the giggle at the end that got it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. But any yeah. any any last thoughts on nope, that? Dave? that does yeah, I think. Yeah. Do we need? Do we want? Yeah. Because Norris, I'm. I think you got on on your list too. I'm assuming because you seem to have enjoyed Horizon. It. Yeah. Yeah. I, I might have a few additional words to say about Horizon. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we'll, we'll patch anything up. Norris doesn't have it. a list. He's our dad. He doesn't play video games. Why? why? I'm, <laughs> I'm the cool dad. I never call Norris daddy. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. <Never> mind. <laughs> I got 10. I got 10 on my list. Oh, yeah. And that 10, it, it goes thusly. Go but off, I, King. I, I've, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't Bo. do that. Hell, hella lit, fam. Yeah. <laughs> Savage AF. List like a fam. Okay. Um, My number 10. Uh, and I actually moved some of these around like an hour ago after some thought. But number 10 is Life is Strange Before the Storm. The cool. prequel Life is Strange game that came out this year that isn't technically even fully out because there's going to be four episodes and only two are out. Um, I think that was the only thing that was stopping me from playing it is finding out that like only half the game is out. That's always the thing stopping me from playing these kind of games. Yeah, like it makes more sense to wait until the full game comes out, but... Uh, Kat and I were looking for a game to play together. Like adventure games are really easy to go through together, and it was a good gateway drug for me to convince Kat that her and I should play through all of Life is Strange, which we all now are. Because Life is Strange is my favorite adventure game ever made. Cool. The uh, oh, strike is over, and Ashley Birch is going to come back as voice which is actor. weird. Like I, I, I know, like it's like the weirdest stance to take because I know there was a scab that came in to do the voice. She did a surprisingly good job. Wait, she was Aloy too, wasn't she? Uh, Ashley Birch was. Ashley Birch was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So like a new a new voice actor came in to be a scab to uh to play as Chloe who is the main character in this prequel episodic series and she does a really good job she's, she's kind of diff- she is kind of different she's si- slightly different because she's slightly younger and yeah. smoked uh. less pot yeah it's it, it's weird like because after Kat and I went through the episodes of Before the Storm we started playing Life is Strange and I didn't notice the like I, I was like oh yeah that sounds like Chloe until you play the original Life is Strange it's like oh it doesn't sound like Chloe but I'm digressing here um. 
it might be partially because Life is Strange, as I said, is one of my favorite adventure games of all time. But Before the Storm is good. It's better than it has any right to be, considering it's not Don't Nod making this, and it's not about, like, you don't have superpowers with your character in this game as you do in the original Life is Strange. But Would you... there's a lot of really good scenes that are in this game. There's a lot of really good moments, and it's, it's, predominantly, bet- it's a predominantly about a relationship between two characters, Chloe and, and Rachel. And Rachel which is something that's like talked about but never like fully shown in the in the original life is strange and it it gives that relationship like such life such breadth like you actually care about this like burgeoning relationship that's growing between these two characters and in like in a in a town they fucking hate with like their lives and their family that they want to get away from and like it seems very like like teenage and kind of insubstantial at times but like that makes it almost seem better yeah i never it, feel like that as a yeah, because, 26 year old yeah, exactly because it, it reminds you of like at, like when you were a teenager even when you're like your age now and and i don't know like i i, I tear up when i play these life is strange games because i feel like they do like that teenage angst shit really well and it hits. If you're new to the series, would you recommend? Absolutely, playing Mike. One? I think you should play Life is Strange. Well, like, would, no, I was gonna say, would you recommend uh, playing the Before the Storm prior to it? Because it is. Cr- no. It seems like it's mm, no. Or, I I would almost say play if you haven't played Life is Strange. I play either. Life is Strange. You should play Life is Strange because that one is finished. It's, yeah. It, oh yeah. Okay. It also and, sounds, and then I would say I'm wait sold. until Before the Storm is <laughs> done, and then play Before the it Storm. It also sounds like one of those sequels that a lot of the weight behind it comes from the fact that you know what the future is going to be. Kind of. Yeah. It's one of those things where like the prequel came after for a reason. Yeah, I, like I would how you say, know how Anakin is going to become Darth, so a lot of his decisions are very important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, <laughs> good prequels. Though. Yeah, good example good of a prequel. strong prequel. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a good adventure game. It's 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 my number ten. Uh, number nine uh, is an indie game. Shockingly enough, there's a fair number of indie games on here for me. Wait, can I guess it? You go ahead. It's Pyre? not shocking at all that you. Is it the cat does. who went to college? Pyre? It's not the cat that went to college. It is Pyre. Yeah, nice. Pyre was my number wow. nine. Uh, Pyre was hands down the best text adventure slash uh, NBA Jam clone <laughs> that came out in 2017. Cool. So I'm sorry, Barkley, shut up, shut up and jam too. And that game's never coming out. Uh, Pyre fucking rules. Um, it's made by the guys that did Bastion and Transistor. One of those games I loved. One of those games I didn't really like. Um, and uh, regardless of anything else, the the team Supergiant Games they make really good stories and. Even if the idea of like playing a text adventure game doesn't necessarily like get your goat these days, it's a really good text adventure. They build a really interesting world that's surprisingly open that can go in a number of different directions because basically what it is is you're you're a fucking weird basketball team playing against other weird basketball teams in purgatory, trying to win enough games so you can get back to he- like get get out of purgatory. And like if you win enough games, you can send one of your teammates back up to to the to the earth realm or whatever it is. But you can make that choice as to who it is, and so like the remaining scenarios, like your entire team could be different as time goes on, or you could just lose all the games, and the game would still continue on from there. It's, if you it's, send your best player up, you can send your best player up. You can send your worst worth. players up. You could lose the final match and not send anyone up, and then your opponent sends someone up, and then when you play them later, that opponent's gone. Like it's it's very open mm-hmm. to that, but. The two guiding things to this game is it's got a really interesting story and a really interesting world that's well crafted, and the hot dunks are fucking rad. It's a really fun game to play. I wish they put multiplayer in this game because it feels like a game that would it'd be good for multiplayer, and I really enjoy it. If you like the idea of of hot dunks in your text adventure, give it a look. Give it a good old check. Uh, number eight, Persona Five. We talked about this a bit yeah. just to keep it real succinct. Uh, boy, that game's pretty. That game's got fucking style for days. And I'm very excited to finish it. <laughs> I put 20 hours in, which is like a tenth of that fucking game, and we'll see where it goes from there. Got some solid rule, rule for 34 as well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some porny ass shit in there. <laughs> Number seven, Wolfenstein 2. Mike did a better job of explaining this than I think I could. It's a game without it's a game with its problems, but there's a good game there. Like it's it, there is a good game there. It just bogged there's a, down there's a good, by itself. There's a good game there, and goddamn, there's some cutscenes. Yeah. Play it on easy. Kill some Nazis. Go through it all. Yeah, play, play, play it on like easy, and I and I do not make that recommendation lightly. Here's here's the thing that I, I'm I'm intrigued if this is going to be controversial or not. But my number six is Horizon Zero Dawn. That's fair. Nah, which is no, again, like high, too- I think compared to the rest of y'all. I feel but- like there are games that did more important things this year. So whatever comes after this, better be good, Norris. Um, well, I want to see your Russian. Like, cat I'm interested. Call it cat. Call it cat. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Uh, Please take Cat College off your list. No, Cat College I, is I above Horizon me, Zero Dawn, and I'm mad. <laughs> let me let me continue on with my list. So that's okay. my number six game. Uh, my number five is Cuphead. 
Nice. Oh yeah. It is a game that I feel if had any of you played it, it would definitely be on your list. Probably Cuphead pretty high. Cuphead is quite topical this year. Yeah. <laughs> From I hear it's too hard to be reviewed. <laughs> How did game, it make your list? list? Should they get good? <laughs> well, it's when we learned that uh, that certain people cannot tolerate bad. Gameplay like, that and is, journalism, but they can th tolerate heated gaming moments from famous YouTube players. Oh, yeah, yeah, as long as they're playing as as, well, as long as they're playing well, they can say any racial slur they want during it. Absolutely. No, you see, if he had actually like been killing someone and saying it, it would have been fine. Oh yeah, nobody would have <laughs> yeah. objected. So, and you know, like whatever, I actually beat Cuphead over the course of like a day and a half. So it's because I'm awesome at video games. So I don't. Even yeah, care. I need yeah. to find someone who's good at video games to co-op that game with me. I'll co-op with you. Okay, I'm, good. I'm good at video games. All right, cool. sounds um, good. Cuphead rules. Um, it's it's a game that you need to see in motion to fully understand because that art style, as as much as everyone else has already talked about it, that art style is fucking rules. It's impressive. It's something it's a, new. It's a lost that we art really that I'm glad before. they found again. I secretly yeah. hope. I are, no, sorry. I secretly am glad that they took a very cool art style and said, "Fuck you. You can't see it unless you're good." <laughs> Which like sounds super like egotistical put, gamer, but I like put it. a skill barrier up. <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing as a let's play. Yeah, the, exactly. The only weird thing about Cuphead is is initially it seemed like it was a game that was just entirely going to be a boss rush game. And then people seemingly wanted levels that were platformery, or at least like not just fighting a boss. And by a wide margin, the weakest parts of this game are the ones that like are the levels that aren't just you fighting a boss. They're the uh, ones where you're like going through and fighting smaller enemies and getting through it. Those ones are frustrating. They don't seem as they seem fine, they seem fun, but this game is all about fighting ridiculous fucking bosses and like seeing the crazy animations and going through like the intricate fucked up shooter hell timing of it all. And I really love it. I would play through it again and I would want to bring someone else with me. The, uh, the biggest disappointment of 2017 is that animation that you linked that was Cuphead Dark Souls and that game oh, does yeah. not exist, which is... Uh, a it was a gooder. That was a good mm -hmm. concept. Yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. So my number four game, but a little cat comes back from college. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Uh, my number four game is Night in the Woods. This is a game, if you've been one of the people listening to this podcast and our podcast beforehand, I've been talking about this game since 2014. And I'm going to say this beforehand, there are some people in this room that I think would enjoy this game a lot. I actually, based on what you've told me about this game and based on the generally high reviews it's gotten, and I do like story-based indie games, I the, think there is something here. Yeah. The, the, the two people I'm going to point out, and I'm not, saying, I'm not saying, Kelly and Matt, you wouldn't like this game. I'm, I'm just gunning this from this conversation due to personal reasons. Yeah, okay, like you know, we you and I know the developer that maybe makes us all like chicken soup and that's whatever, but like I will say like just Dave and Mike knowing you guys pretty well, I think you guys would have some level of emotional resonance with this game. Uh, I think you should maybe check it out and play it, maybe if it goes on sale sometime in the next little bit. Yeah, I think I will keep I will keep an eye on it because because mm -hmm. you gave it such a high thing. You're a maybe. I think you would like this game, but there's like some like kind of platformery nonsense to it that you might not be willing to suffer through. Dave, I think you'd be willing to suffer through this stuff to get through the story and kind of like, it, it's a game that tells a story about like what how 2017 has felt better than any other game. Hmm. And I, I really enjoy this idea of this like small town college dropout who may or may not be a cat person just like experiencing the fact that life is a fuck and everything sucks and just like kind of going person, through yeah. that. That is I, not Kind of sounds like, and, 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 like and, not, and not in like this ham-handed heavy-fisted way that I'm kind of explaining it right now. Like it's good. I'm just so happy this game came out because for years this was our exhibit A of like you know indie games have gone too far like because it's about <laughs> a cat that drops out of college and it's like why the fuck would anyone it's, care or play that? Yeah. It, it, I, I think look, that was the, I, this is, this is more like a running joke. I actually think that this game looks pretty cool. Like it's not my cup of tea uh, because to my knowledge there's no way of making numbers go higher. Is that true? No, there there are, there are uh, okay. So there are precious few numbers in this there, game. There is, however, a Guitar Hero mini game because that was topical when the game was starting to be developed. It's actually yeah. kind of fun. I really enjoyed. Yeah. I really enjoyed like the three or four Guitar Hero mini games in that game. But it, but it looks it looks pretty good, and it's it, most of the time when I'm making fun of the game, I'm actually just making fun of Norris. That's fine. Yeah, I can exactly. accept that. I I love. I, I'm I'm totally okay with that. Um, yeah, not for everybody, including some people in this room. But I think it's a game that is there a DLC. No, I can't what, imagine. I'll, I'll go home and I'll put it on my wish list, and then it'll Steam will notify me when it's on sale. Uh, it's 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 a game that spoke to me, and it's a game that I really liked, especially with like the weirdness of the world according to 2017. Uh, number three, game that came out relatively recently, the last game I just finished is Super Mario Odyssey. Oh yeah, mm. um, you finished, finished that game that? already? 
Y yeah. I thought that was your vacation game. I did too, apparently. <laughs> oh, geez. Turns out, like, when I'm studying, like, I would rather spend two hours... I would rather, like, spend two hours playing this video game after studying and get no sleep than mm -hmm. sleep. So that's what happened to me for the last, like, two weeks. Nice. Um, like, that's I haven't... A, like, super counterproductive. Oh, yeah, no, you know like, it you're was... you saying that school's really hard? It might be because you're not sleeping. Maybe. Possibly. Ooh. But, um, I, I think I did fine on my finals. Listen, but games off. are more important than school, so... Both right. are equally as important. Eh. <laughs> That's not. That's also not true. Um, I haven't hundred percent finished it. I, you need to get like nine hundred moons. I've only gotten like five hundred, which you know that's barely anything. Mm, yeah. Um, it's enough to get the, the the like the final ending go through the last. You get level. more moons or more korok seeds. Uh, moons are better than whatever the <laughs> fuck you were talking about. What korok seeds are Breath of the Wild, dog? I know. Oh, it's okay. a dumb part of that game. I know. You get a golden turd though. But I want my bags to be good. Let me talk about <laughs> stealing the souls of fucking frogs in Mario, please. Yeah, tell me okay. more about Jessica Jones. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Super Mario Odyssey. It feels like the distillation of what video games should be from from a gameplay perspective. It is a video game as video game. There's no story to speak of. Princess Peach has been kidnapped again. Problematic. You gotta save her. Problematic. Doesn't matter. It's fucking... It's it's just so much fucking fun. It, it It's it's the Mario game we've deserved since Mario 64. It's it's the best Mario game since Super Mario World. It fucking rules. I want you guys to play it. I might lend you a Switch so you can play it. it it's just... It, it's fucking great. It feels good from beginning to end. There are moments that, like, call back to old points in time in the Super Mario World that, like... You have to be dead inside not to feel like a little bit nostalgic and teary-eyed as you're going through it. It's it's a celebration of Nintendo and video games and Mario in a way that, like, we frankly probably don't even deserve. It fucking rules. And you can play it on the toilet. And you can yeah. play it on the toilet. And on the bus, which is also pretty good. Did you the take bus that leap? my toilet. Yeah, I've, I've played this game on the bus a couple good. of times. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and my number two game... Which I, I feel like I'm actually surprised that this is this high, considering that you all have played this and it's not on your top. But my number two game is Destiny Two. Eh. Oh, I liked it. I, I can see Destiny why you too. liked it. It's I, because you value friendships, and these guys don't. I, I guess, yeah. It, it's a yeah. it's a scenario where, like, as much as I know, Destiny Two has an asterisk next to it. They've Bungie has not done a good job of keeping up with adding things to it. Their late game content is not great. They seem to have royally mm -hmm. fucked the dog when it comes to this this expansion. But God damn it, like when I think about that game, I just think about the times when it was like me and Dave and Kelly or me and Dave and, and friend of the show Jack just like playing through a, a strike or something like that or like the Vanguard stuff and just like having a fucking great time. Because you mained Hunter. You basically picked easy mode right off the bat. Yeah, fine. I don't care if I, I, don't care <laughs> if I picked the easy class. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to get shamed into it. I still had a ton of fun. I, I really enjoyed um, playing that game on my own and just kind of doing the grind like I felt like the shooting was always like good enough that like I, I never had a I never I never didn't enjoy like starting up at like a, a public event and going through it and then just like there's dumb moments where like you go to a public event and it's like a minute and a half before it starts and then like I would just like sit there on the side looking all stoic before it starts and like four other randos would show up and just like try to like harangue and dance around me and then they'd like sit down too and it felt like like a picturesque moment was being taken before the match before like the, wow, the, you, the event started you have drastically different memories of public events i i had moments where i wish i could scream into my microphone to shoot the fucking giant black ball in the sky you goddamn scrubs kelly here's the thing here's what i'm seeing right now from this conversation right now uh norris has never played an mmo before oh and yeah he's he's norris is experiencing uh, what I believe you and I experienced when we first started playing World of Warcraft, which is a, like magical world of like, like, hey, sometimes people can cooperate and like have fun together. Hey, I'm running. Norris is one of those one of those scrubs that you were yelling at. He was having a gay yeah. old time. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, whatever. No, I was always doing the epic public events or whatever. Yeah, the no, no, heroic. No, if as long as you look, doesn't matter what you do. If you try to trigger the heroic public event, you are a friend of mine. You're on the side of the angels, yeah, don't yeah. worry. But if you yep. don't take the effort to go onto the subreddit and meticulously learn every way of doing the heroic events, you might as well die because you are useless in this world. That sounds horrible. That sounds <laughs> terrible. Kelly, Kelly, maybe... That sounds like a bad you know, We're learning a little... Your little, parents little. should never have had you. It was a bad decision <laughs> in the first place. They should have spent the money that they spent on you on buying better destiny. Buy a better child. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 you know what? I'm with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there there are some really good memories from Destiny 2, and it's it's gonna it's gonna hold a special place in my heart this year. Yeah. 
I know, like, there is an permits. asterisk. I'm intrigued to see what we ha- what happens when we all pull our knives out and talk about the full game of the year coming up, but <clears throat> it was my number two game this year. I mean, I'm in, on in my last strong year, year. so right, we need yeah. to hurry up. Okay. Uh, number one, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yep. Uh, I feel like there is a lot I could say about this. I feel like there's a lot of counter-arguments to what I say, but there is something mm-hmm. about truly feeling like you're exploring a world that feels like it deserves to be explored that I haven't felt in a very long time. Yeah. That weird that world feels like real, which is weird to say in a in a like open it's, world environment. It's like it's it's, it's a thing like uh, oh. and, and this is <laughs> there there like there are a couple of gamer YouTubers that I've been watching recently. God God knows why, but they like one of them said a very salient point recently about open world mm-hmm. games, where like game developers seem very focused on making as big a world as possible, but filling it with not enough interesting content, like. Most open world games, they feel sparse. They feel like you're doing the same six or seven things over and over again. And maybe if you're Dave or someone, you felt Breath of the Wild did the same thing. But I personally felt like when I was going through that game, like I, I always wanted to continue exploring. Yeah. Like I thought the dungeons actually weren't the best dungeons no, in Zelda they games. Were, yeah. The boss battles were fun, but like nothing really to write home about. There was um, nothing memorable really the, about either of the any of the divine beasts, really. The it, uh, the dungeons feel like um they had a team dedicated to puzzles and they couldn't they couldn't put them in very well, so they made the dungeon mechanic. But to I, make the I puzzles. just, I, I blissed out in a way that like I, I didn't think video games could get to my cynical soul at this point when I was playing this game. Just exploring the world and going through and and like finding a like, hey, I'm gonna climb to the top of that mountain and climb to the top of that mountain and seeing off like kilometers yeah. off in the distance. Oh, there's an orange telltale sign. There's probably a shrine over there. And then spending an hour and a half getting to that shrine and like going through it and feeling like a sense of accomplishment just by doing that. So there's even though like the thing like there's not a lot of physical rewards you get from that, but it just it felt good. And I was listening to podcasts at the same time, <laughs> and it was just like it, it was it was cathartic, and it, it felt good, and it felt I don't know, I felt happy yeah, playing I it. Think that- I don't feel like that all that often playing video games anymore yeah. i don't I, know maybe I, you should stop yeah. maybe i should no. yeah that's it you've you've hit peak video game i think i think that you you did a you, you really yeah i think like the most important sentence that you mentioned about it is like it's a world that felt like it deserved to be explored yeah and like so much so much of games i feel like the only reason i'm exploring because like okay i guess i gotta get all the feathers and like i don't know like it's it felt like to me, I mean, I I, th- I had the same reaction as you, and I'm gonna use this one like anecdote, be- like now not during the game of the year, but like so like this game you lent this to me like when Steph and I were like fairly like new in our relationship, we like started spending a little bit more time together, and then we started playing a lot of Zelda together, and like we we quickly found like there are like different components of that game that like I liked versus what she liked, but like we both liked that game so much that we would just like seamlessly pass the controller like back and <laughs> forth between each other for like hours at a time and like that game like did a lot for like our relationship and like us to grow together Shout and like to staff yeah. one of my favorites 2017 <laughs> yeah. yeah nice yeah, favorite like, girlfriend 2017 yeah. of the group is she <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> biased yeah. too. who's yeah. my favorite gf uh, technically nice. Shar and i met last year so it's fine oh. it but yeah, yeah. it's it, it was i don't know like that game is like forever going to be for me like a really a really special thing in my life and mm-hmm. like i'm not i'm that's why i'm mentioning this now and not during the 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 final thing but like it's it's like i, I feel know. like i'm gonna be reiterating all, a lot of this but like in a much more surly drunken way <laughs> in like an hour from now but yeah like the the last thing i want to say before we we cap this part of the podcast off and we get on to the next part Ooh, i do is, have a very nerdy thing to say about breath of the wild okay you go then i go then we probably should wrap this up all right yeah. sounds good so this is a very like head in ass develop or designer thing about breath of the wild but there's a fundamental design point that they did in breath of the wild which is the triangle um and i'm going to just use specifically level design they used it a lot but the idea of looking at a triangle say a mountain and at every corner you see something interesting now you go for one of those corners because like hey this thing drew my attention You walk over there from that point you then see another triangle of three very interesting things the entire design of that game is built around the concept of always seeing at least three interesting things and Hmm. it's something that like skyrim never did where it's like oh i see one i see a cave i'm gonna i see a bear i'm gonna go fight that bear and Hmm. it's like nintendo does a really good job of like picking one core design element to fit their entire game around and it's very weird 
and interesting that their first like open world game was built around the concept of always seeing three interesting things. Yeah, it, it's a lot of people make comparisons to Zelda to, to Skyrim and some of that's deserved. They're both very, very open, open world games. But the difference in my mind is the fact that when you're exploring around in Skyrim, unless you find like a specific, like highly customized, like side quest or, or mission that like is supposed to be really dope. The only thing that's really going to happen is you're going to find a cave and that cave's going to be the same palette as all the other caves. Or yeah. a dice and, is going to roll and a dragon's going to swoop in. And, on and, you. <laughs> and you might find something that is, that is going to drop that's to your level in that cave. Like, there's, there's never really like a sense of like, I'm going to explore because there might be something worth exploring. Yeah. There's one or two exceptions in Skyrim. I know there's one really dope cave that has a giant like ruin in it or whatever, but for the most part, whatever. you find a cave and it's got cave shit. It doesn't matter and you just wasted 20 minutes of your life. And in, in, in Breath of the Wild, in my opinion at least, and you could probably argue this, is that every fucking thing I found felt like it was worth exploring. Yeah. And like they do a good job because like in Skyrim, you see cave and you're like, oh, I wonder what's going to be that cave. In... Breath of the Wild, you see one of the Chica puzzles. You know that there's just going to be one puzzle. You know that it's going to be an interesting concept, self-contained within that puzzle, but you also think to yourself, man, I want to expand my heart or my stamina or yeah. whatever the fuck that cave's going to have to offer, which like really helps compartmentalize the things that you're going to do in that game where you're like, hey, I see a, a Chica puzzle i'm gonna do, go do it and then you leave that chica puzzle and you see three things and it's up to you to decide like do i climb that that mountain do i go for that next puzzle or do i go whatever to the left is none of these options are really good though like that's my problem <laughs> like all right okay i feel like what's happening right now is we're like i feel like i'm just stumping for Dave, this game Dave's for like gearing the, for the larger he's gearing up for yeah, part yeah, two I'm, and i'm so, and I'm, my, my so, so here's what I'm we're gonna do with them. is i'm gonna i'm gonna end this part of the podcast this is the end of the part one this is our feel good our own favorites this is like this is like the good parts of 2017 and our feelings of games um it's been super hopped up for a podcast about feel good gamery uh we're on itunes and stitcher wherever podcasts are held we have a facebook group come find us we have an email super hopped up at gmail.com we have a twitter at super hopped up uh, and please go ahead and tell your friends about us. We'd very much appreciate it. Um, so now we're going to end this thing. Wait. Uh, Metal Gear Marathon. You, you always got... Well, I mean, yeah, the Metal, Metal Oh, Gear. yeah, God, that's important too, yeah. By the time this episode... Uh, yeah, we won't so have... So this yeah. episode is going to air... Um, it's, we're going to be officially available the morning of December 15th. By the time this comes up, uh, I will be awake and currently schlepping a whole bunch of stuff to our undisclosed location for setting up for the Metal Gear Marathon. And... Um, by the day after this comes out at 10 a.m. So on December 16th, 10 a.m., me, Mike, Kelly, and four other idiots are going to be playing 150 hours of Metal Gear, Marath uh, Metal Gear Solid games to raise money for charity. Um, we've done this a couple years in the past. It's always been a really good time. It's always a bit of a nightmare. We've started going through our, our social media stuff today, and it's actually caught on surprisingly well. Um, if you are interested in watching a bunch of drunken fools play Metal Gear games for six and a half straight days and you you don't have to watch that whole time but i mean way. do mention that it's for charity we, he we're not just doing this he did. for he, uh, I, I feel like i did but if i didn't if i didn't stress it. the point that we're doing this for child's play a charity that raises money to buy games and toys for children's hospitals uh go to metalgearmarathon.com please check us out we would very much appreciate it you have anything kelly i mean you put me after the like altruistic thing but also go check out our youtube channel where we do a lot oh, of yeah okay that's that's fuck you're right yeah that too okay <laughs> yeah it's so it's it's a step up program for young podcasters <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we're we're starting up a podcast incubator big brothers yeah. and sisters but for podcasts yeah uh no we're uh we've expanded out into the video realm so go on to youtube and look up super hopped up yeah like i, I feel like I, I need to say this like like dave and kelly like fucking props like props to you especially kelly because you're the one doing a lot of the heavy lifting but props to the both of you for actually putting out some really dope video content yeah, the last we, need, we need that we need yeah. some content like i want to be humble but i literally killed myself in the last two weekends like just working on this and it's so much fun and Dave and I are playing through the surge, and it's a it's hella entertaining. Uh, yeah. We Monster Hunter World Beta. I, yeah, well. I, yeah, I I I, I want to start to try to be part of that more in the new year. So yeah, 2018 is going to be video super hopped up. I'm L really L excited for next year. I have like, video. I have some really mm -hmm. good ideas for some stuff oh, I want to sure. do for yeah. I would be down. There's a lot of good I, a lot of good things coming out. So soon. go subscribe to that and get notifications and and live the dream, baby. All right. All right. Okay. So now. We're going to end this. Everyone's going to maybe drink a little bit more. We're going to get all fucking pissed off and surly, and we're going to come back, and we're going to scream at each other for like a, between 40 to an hour. 
and figure yeah. out what our official game of the year is. Y'all I ready finished for that? my six yeah. pack. Well, Let's I got to get some more growler. Okay. Need. So thank you guys for listening. Um, tune in the week after this while we're doing the marathon. So if you're whatever, um, tune in next week <laughs> and uh, listen to us decide our game of the year. And we love you and uh, have a merry Christmas. Peace out, love you, mother. Good night.